Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of things. Uh, we're going to first talk about nested loops and uh, nested, any kind of nested loops. And just to give you an idea of what we are looking for, I'm going to run this program that I have here and show you the output of this program. Notice we have a box of stars. We have about eight rows of stars with 15 stars in each. So the goal was to make a box of stars 15 wide and eight high. So in order to do this, if you again look at our output, for the first row we need 15 stars. Then we need to go to the next row and we have 15 stars. So for each row, we need 15 stars. So if you look here, I have two variables declared. I have a program um, called nested loop, which you can find under sample code files. X is 15 and Y is 8, two integers that I've declared. Then we go through two loops. The outer loop is for each row, and the inner loop is for the number of stars that we need. So the outer loop says, how high do you want it to be? So for I equals 0, I want 8 rows, so I less than Y, I plus plus. I have a variable I, which serves as my counter for the number of rows. Then notice I have my curly braces to put my next for loop. For each row, which is my outer loop, I have another variable called j that I start from 0. And that essentially goes up to the number of stars, which is 15 in my case. So j less than x, j plus plus, output the star. And then this end line is at the end of each row. I have a new line that gets output. Then I go to the next row, i gets incremented, which is my second row. j starts from 0 again and counts up to 15. I get 15 stars, and I output a new line, and so on and so forth. So this is how you do a nested loop where for each row or for each something, you want a certain number of occurrences. So this is going to be the base for, our, for a couple of things that we're going to do after this for a selection sort where we are going to um, use a sorting technique and sort a list of numbers and also for two-dimensional arrays which is in the next video. So in this I'm going to continue. So here's our output for our box of stars and if you change for example the number of stars to 25 then our program looks a little different. The output looks a little different. I have 25 stars on every row instead of 15. So you can play around with this, come up with different patterns, maybe it's not a box, maybe it's a triangle of stars. These are good challenges for you to work on. So with that done, I'm going to exclude this program and I'm going to add another program for selection sort. So we're going to see how to do selection sort. Now if you want, before you start working on this, you should probably look at the book and make sure you understand selection sort. Selection sort is the technique where you're given a list of unsorted numbers. And the way you do selection sort is you take the first number and you, you essentially look through the whole list and you find the smallest number. And you take that smallest number and you swap it with the first number. So now the first element in your list is sorted. Then you take the rest of the list starting from the second element. That's your unsorted list. You find the smallest number again. And then you swap it with the second element. So now the first two elements of your list are sorted. The rest of the list starts from element number three. And you repeat this process. So notice there are two iterations to this process. One is to go through the list and find the smallest number and swap it. And then the next iteration would be to repeat this over and over until there are no more numbers in our list or until we have reached the last number in our list. So this is again an, another example for nested loops. For every iteration, we go through, find the smallest number, swap it with the first. The next iteration starts at the next number and so on and so forth. And there must be a condition where it eventually the loops end. Otherwise, we would be in an infinite loop. So let's take a look at what we have here. So we again have our constant called cap equals 10, 
which helps us um, define the number of elements in our list. We have a function called selection sort. It takes the array, remember arrays are passed by reference, no ampersand sign in front of it, just the square brackets to say it is an array. But it's passed by reference, so we don't need to return anything. It's a void function. It takes the array. The array gets sorted. When it comes back from the function, the array, the original array is sorted because we passed, passed it by reference. So here is my array. It has a list of numbers. I hard-coded the numbers in there, so um, we, it's easier for us to just take a look at the sort um, algorithm. So then we call the selection sort function. And then we output the list. So main is very simple. There's nothing complicated there. Let's take a look at our selection sort. Receives the list by reference. We have a couple of different variables. Remember, we have to find the smallest number, and then we have to swap it. So I have a variable called small index. We need the index in order to be able to swap it. We need the value to find the smallest, which is fine. When we find the smallest, we need to say list of 0 equals list of 5. If 5 is the smallest, then we are kind of swapping. That's what that means. So we need the small index more than the value. We need the location, and we need a temp variable to swap. So here's what we do. We go through for this is my outer loop. Here's my list, all unsorted. So we start at 0. i less than capacity minus 1. The reason we are going only to minus 1 is once we get to the last number, it's already sorted. There is nothing more to compare it with. Remember, we are always going through and comparing to find the smallest number. So once we reach this, the last number, there's nothing more to compare. So we don't want to go all the way to cap. We want to stop one short. So that's our location. And we are checking to see if list of location, um, excuse me, that was the outer loop. Now we go into the outer loop and find the smallest number. We say small index equals i. So we set the first index to be the smallest value. Remember our largest algorithm where we found the largest number in the array, we always start out by saying the first element is the largest or the smallest. Then we go through and when we find the next largest or smallest, we essentially say now that is the new smallest. So this is a similar algorithm where we say small index equals i, which is 0. Then we start comparing from the next one for location, which is loc equals i plus 1. We are comparing 0 with 1. So location will start at 1 when i is 0, location less than cap. And we go through this for loop all the way to the end of the list. And we compare each number with that first number. If list of loc is less than list of small index, which is initialized to be the first number, remember, then small index becomes that new location. If not, small index remains the same. So we keep going through the whole loop to find the smallest number. That's this loop right here. Once we find the smallest number, we need to swap it. We need to swap it with the first number, which is our i here. So we put the small index, the value in the small index to temp, move what is in 0 to that location, then we take what's in temp and move it to zero. Okay, so you might want to write down some of these things as you work through this program and see if it makes sense. Then, now the first number is sorted. We increment i. Now we're going to look at the rest of the list starting from one. We go through the same process. We start over, find the smallest number in the rest of the list. So i will now be starting from one, and so location will be starting from two. So we compare 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, and so on and so forth until we find the smallest number. Once we find the smallest number, we swap it with location 1, which is what i is right now. When this is done, 0 and 1 are sorted. And then we start the same process over from 2. And we keep doing this. And in our list with 10 elements, we will stop at the ninth element, which would be um, i less than 9. So we will actually stop at the eighth element once we have compared and swapped the eighth element, which whatever element it is, then the ninth element will already be sorted. So we are all done with it. So try to try to write it out as you go through. Try to write out every iteration to see how it is. You will have some questions in your quiz that says, after three steps, how does the list look? 
So try to do some of those things that will help you figure out this algorithm better. So let me build it and run it. Let's take a look at it. So here's my list all sorted from smallest to largest. Another thing that you can try a good exercise is to see if you can sort it in the descending order as opposed to ascending order. The more you work on these things, the better you will get at programming.